Let's get started on today's notes over determinants and inverse matrices. And first, we're going to talk about finding the determinant. So every square matrix has the same number of rows as it does columns, has a related value called its determinant. This is our vocabulary word. It's called the determinant, and it's notated using vertical brackets such as this. So a matrix might, it has like curved brackets, but when I'm finding the determinant, it's just straight vertical brackets. So the determinant of a two by two matrix is the difference of the products of the diagonals. It's the difference of the products of the diagonals. So remember difference, I'm gonna be subtracting. Products, I'm gonna be multiplying. So let's talk about what that would look like. So in this first example, if I'm finding the determinant of this matrix, it's a two by two matrix. Finding the determinant, so I put it in vertical brackets. It's just a notation. It's just, that's what it means when it's written like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find four times two right here, which is eight, and I'm gonna subtract seven times five, which is 35. And eight minus 35, is negative 27. And that's my answer. So the determinant of this matrix is negative 27. So now you try. I would encourage you to pause the video, give it a try, and then see if you get your answer right. I am going to work it out for you though. The first thing I'm going to do is 3 over 2 times 8, which is 12, and I'm going to subtract 1 half times negative 12. And I'm going to subtract 1 half times negative 12, which is the same thing as adding 6, right? Minus negative 6 is the same thing as adding 6, so 12 plus 6 is 18, and that is the determinant. In a 3 by 3 matrix, it gets a little more complicated, so I'm going to walk you through this. It, it gets very complicated, actually. But in a 3 by 3 matrix, the first thing you're going to do is rewrite the first and second columns outside the determinant bracket. So here's the first column, I've got it rewritten here. Here's the second column, I've got it rewritten here. So now you can see it just looks like a really big matrix. So here's the first thing you're gonna do. I've got it written left, right, and then left minus right equals the determinant. So what you do, if you, if you start in this upper left corner, you're starting from the left, A times E times I, right there, plus B times F times G, plus C times D times H, right there. You add all those products up and you get left. All right, so now let's move on to the second part of this. So now when I'm starting from the right, B times D times I, got that written right there, plus A times F times H, I've got that written right there, plus C, times E times G, I've got that written right here. When I add those products together, that equals the number right, which is just what I'm using to notate that. Then I'm gonna subtract left minus right, and that gives me the determinant of this three by three matrix. So let's actually, I'm gonna have you um, refer to that little example as you work through this next example. We're finding the determinant of this three by three matrix. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite those first two columns outside of my determinant brackets. So seven, two, four, I'm gonna rewrite seven, two, four, and then three, five, one, I'm gonna write those as well. Three, five, one. So now let's start from the left. The left, I'm gonna be multiplying seven times five, I'm starting here, seven times five times two. Seven times five, times two, and that's 70. I'm gonna add that to three times six times four. Three times six times four, that's 72. And then I'm gonna add that to one times two times one. And that's two. And when I find the sum of all of those numbers, I get 144. That's my number on the left, I'm just using that to notate. Now let's do the numbers from the right. When I start in that upper right corner, 
3 times 2 times 2, I'm working through that diagonal, right? This one right here. 3 times 2 times 2. And I get 12. And then I'm going to add that to this diagonal right here. 7 times 6 times 1. Which is 42. And then the last diagonal, 1 times 5 times 4 plus 1 times 5 times 4, and I get 20. And now when I find the sum of all of these numbers, I get 74. And that's the number on the right. Remember, the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix is left minus the right, and that's going to equal my determinant. So the left was 144. The right was 74, which means my determinant is 70. That is the determinant of this matrix. So let's move on to our next example. I would encourage you to pause the video and try this on your own. I am going to work it out, though, if you need an extra example. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite the first two columns outside of our determinant brackets. So 6, 3, negative 3, 2, 4, negative 2. And then I'm going to work from the left first. So starting in the upper left corner, 6 times 4 times 5, which is 120, plus 2 times 1 times negative 3, which is negative 6, plus 0 times 3 times negative 2, times negative 2, which is plus 0. When I add, when I find the sum of all of these numbers, I get 114. And that's my number from the left. So now let's work from the right. Starting in the upper right, 2 times 3 times 5, I work with my first full diagonal, right? 2 times 3 times 5. 2 times 3 times 5 is 30. I'm going to add that to 6 times 1 times negative 2. So I'm going to add that to negative 12. And then my last diagonal, 0 times 4 times negative 3. 0 times 4 times negative 3. So I'm going to be adding 0. So 30 plus negative 12 is 18. And this is my number from the right. Remember, left minus right will give you your determinant for this uh, 3 by 3 matrix. So that's 114 minus 18, which is 96. And that's your determinant for this matrix. So now let's talk about the identity matrix. So we've kind of touched on this in previous uh, notes, but your identity matrix is just basically your main diagonal is a set of ones. All of our other entries in your matrix is a zero. So my main diagonal in a two by two matrix is one. Three by three matrix is also one. All other entries are zero. When you multiply any matrix, such as this one, times the identity matrix, you get that same matrix. So that's just a rule that we need to memorize, okay? So any matrix times the identity matrix is just going to be the matrix. It's like multiplying it by one, right? So inverse matrices. Let's move on. A matrix can only have an inverse if it's a square matrix. And not every matrix and not every square matrix has an inverse. So a matrix can only have an inverse if it's a square matrix, what does that mean? It has the same number of rows as it does columns. So the product of matrix A and the inverse of matrix A is the multiplicative identity matrix. This means when I multiply any matrix times its inverse, and you see that little negative one as our like exponent, if you will, it's just our notation. That's how we write the inverse of matrix A. So matrix A, times the inverse of matrix A equals the identity matrix. So we can use this to determine if 
matrices are inverses. We can do this by multiplying these matrices together. So I would pause the video and multiply this matrix right here times this matrix and see if they and find their matrix product. Go ahead and do that now. When you do that, you should get a matrix product that looks like this, which is the identity matrix. Therefore, these two matrices are inverses. Let's look at the next one. When I multiply these two matrices together, go ahead and pause the video and do that now. When you multiply these two matrices together, you get a matrix product of 0, 40, 1, and 26. Do you get the identity matrix? No, you don't. So are these inverse are these matrices um, inverse matrices? They are not. So my answer is no. So let's talk about inverse matrices. So there's kind of a lot going on here, okay? So when we find the matrix inverse, let's say I have matrix A and it has entries A, B, C, D. Okay, I'm just using this for to explain this, how to find an inverse matrix. Then the inverse of matrix A, that's what that means, is one over the determinant times this transposed matrix. So what did we do here? Well, first we have to define the determinant of this matrix, right? If the determinant is zero, the matrix has no inverse, it's not defined. But in this transposed matrix, what happens? Well, A and D switch places, so the left diagonal switch places. What happened to B and C? They changed their sign. So they became opposite, right? So this became negative B, this became negative C. So that's what happens. So let's put this into practice when we find the inverse of a matrix. So in this first matrix, it says find the inverse of each matrix. The first thing we're going to do is find the determinant and write it as a fraction, okay, or in the fraction form. So let's do that right now. So our determinant is, and if you need to refer back to your notes, go ahead and do that, 2 times 5, right? I multiply the left diagonal together, so 2 times 5. And then I'm going to subtract the product of 3 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Minus 15 is negative 5. So my determinant is negative 5. When I'm finding the matrix inverse, I'm going to put 1 over that determinant. I'm going to write it in this fraction. So 1 over negative 5. And then I'm going to multiply it by this transposed matrix. So what do I do? Well, first, this left diagonal, these switch places. So I'm going to put a 5 up here and a 2 over here. And then what happens to this 3 and this 5? This becomes negative 3 and this becomes negative 5. So now we have a scalar that we're multiplying in to this matrix. And we're just going to do that. This scalar gets multiplied by every single entry in this matrix. So negative 1 fifth times 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 fifth times negative 3 is positive 3 fifths. Negative 1 fifth times negative 5 is positive 1. Negative 1 fifth times positive 2 is negative 2 fifths. And now when we go to problem, the next example, we have a 3 by 3 matrix, and I am not going to explain how to do this. Um, on your own. It's very, very detailed how to transpose this matrix. So you absolutely can find the determinant. You can do one over the determinant, but to change this matrix, there's a lot involved. So you're going to use your calculator for this three by three matrix. And I'm going to show you how to do that on a TI-84 calculator. I'm going to show you how to enter in a matrix into your TI-84 or 83 calculator and find the inverse of the matrix. So on your example, you have a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's enter in that data into your calculator. So I'm going to go to second matrix and I'm going to edit this matrix and we'll just edit matrix A. And this is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. 
So it's a three by three matrix. And I'm going to just enter in this data. So I've got zero, and then when I press enter in between the entries, it'll move to the next um, entry, if you will. So then negative six, and make sure you put in negative six, not minus six. Negative four. Let's enter in one, negative four, negative two. One, did that do that? Nope. One, negative four. Negative two, and then our last row is negative three, four, and one. So negative three, then here's four, and here's one. And so we have our matrix, all of our entries entered in, and so we can go to second, quit. And if you just type in second, matrix you can see now that matrix a is a three by three matrix you have it entered into your calculator and so if you just press enter you can see that your matrix is entered so if we want to find the inverse of this matrix i'm going to enter in second matrix and i'm going to press enter and enter in that matrix um, on my home screen but I want to find the inverse of this matrix. So I'm going to click this X to the negative first power, this button right here. And that's just how we notate the inverse of a matrix. Now, when I plug it in like that and I press enter, boom, I have the inverse of matrix A. And as you know, if you multiply a matrix times its inverse, what should you get? You should get the identity matrix. So let's see if we get that. So if I were to plug in matrix A, and then I'm going to multiply this by the inverse of matrix A. So I'm actually going to enter in matrix A again, but this time I'm going to put this um, negative 1 as a, an exponent up there. And when I enter, I get the identity matrix. So this concludes your notes over determinants and inverse matrices. I hope it was helpful.